Okay, it is Tuesday and I'm on my way to Joburg. This is Cape Town International Airport. But it doesn't stop here because in two days I'll land back here after driving the Toyota Yaris TR. Let's talk about the launch of the new Toyota GR Yaris, the fiercest three-part of them all, and detail why the launch itself was as special as the car, and the car is very special indeed. In fact, I'd say it's the very last of the action heroes, but we'll get to that later, as well as a shotgun ride with none other than Janil de Villiers. We were invited to put the new PST through its paces around a tight car track to show off that while many hot hatches have been described as exhibiting go-kart like handling, the GR genuinely does. Yes, GR. G is for Gazoo and R is for racing. This is the bonkers name for Toyota's 60-year-old motorsport endeavors. They have a saying there that goes roads, bull, people and cars. Because it's on the roads, and I'm sure that rally fans would agree off-roads too, that they're constantly honing the driving experience for us. We managed about 10 laps, including sighting and cooldowns, before opting with touring car racing driver Michael Van Rooyen, who showed me what the car was really capable of in the right hands. Between his display and my careful lapping earlier of the short circuit, well, it revealed loads. Let me begin. But first, say hello to the six-speed manual box paired with an all-wheel drivetrain with 198 kilowatts and 360 newton meters from a 1.6 liter turbo engine, three cylinder mind you, equipping it with a zero to 100 in 5.5 seconds. Now, consider that at 1,280 kilos, it possesses a stratospheric power to weight ratio of 0.155 kilowatts per kilo. You can thank a carbon fiber roof and lightweight aluminum bonnet for that plus general use of light components in an attempt to create a rally car for the road. Available in two shades of white, black or red. The end result is a car that betrays its three-cylinder preconceptions with performance akin to a turbocharged four-cylinder, but like a really, really good one. It's fast, it makes the kinds of noises you'd like, especially at the red light, punctuated with all the wastecoat chatter you could possibly hope for. Then there's the way it changes direction, quickly and forgivingly, allowing you to adjust your angle with the steering, the throttle, and even the brakes. But there would be another opportunity to test its metal, because next up was... And yes, let's just keep going. Yeah, I got to spend a bit more time in third gear, and even visited fourth. We are moving now, thanks to the larger circuit's higher speed thresholds. About that handling, those thick hips that I love so much are functional, serving up a wide rear track and even channeling airflow. This in combination with the GR4 all-wheel drive system, tuned McPherson struts up front, trailing double wishbones at the rear, make for dynamic suspension that just wants to be driven hard, and I obliged as hard as I could and loved every moment of it. That is, until Janil de Villiers showed me how it's really done. That is fun. You've been around this track often? No, first time, eh? Oh god, that's wonderful. Never been here before. <laughs> Wow. 
Why not? Why not? Uh, that's a nice thing. <laughs> That's a toy. Oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> yeah, Before we left the track, we were invited to jam on the skid band, do some Gymkhana runs and slaloms, and that was fun, but almost beneath the ability of such a special car. But I appreciated the fact that we weren't meant to take proceedings too seriously, so we're happy about what came next. Unwinding and having dinner alongside some true greats. There were Serge Damso's Rally Conquest, complete with massive wing. It sat alongside the red and black Truena Coupe and the GRMN Yaris. In a separate display, the Celica GT4 Coupe of Rally Legend sat beside a tastefully styled Mark V Supra. And we were invited to drive the Yaris Rally car on a Kenya stage in WRC9 on a PS4 Sim setup. What a great day. Let's talk about what you get for your money. A turbocharged 1.6 liter that just happens to be the most powerful 3 cylinder of its kind in the world. And that's just the start. It features a close ratio 6 speed manual box at a time when rowing your own gears is almost extinct. This I feel, even more than the epic power drain will be its legacy. The brakes are excellent too. 4 part all monoblocks up front and 2 parts at the rear, reining in was a very light car. Up for the rally version and it gets red calipers. Both versions feature a short stroke brake pedal, but the rally model enjoys stiffer springs and adaptive shocks, plus thicker roll bars. Both cars are equipped with lightweight torsion resistant seats and the three pedals are shaped, sized and positioned and have the feel required by any heel toe enthusiast. The cabin is full of clever toys connectivity plus an info pack TFT screen ahead of the steering wheel, featuring amongst other things an all-wheel drive indicator which changes depending on which driving mode you're in because well, that divides up the torque differently, doesn't it? Other takeaways? How about the fact that this is the first all Toyota sports car that GR makes and that this is the first rally homologated WRC car since the Celica GT4. Yet, when faced with the pricing, 606,000 for the regular Yaris GR and 715,000 for the rally version, people lost their minds. Because this is a mere Yaris, except it's not. It's a rally car for the road and for once, the marketing is matched by its ability. As a quick example, the base GR is cheaper and quicker than the new GTI, which we applaud for being priced well. And while the GTI is a masterpiece in its own right, and certainly the easier of the two to live with, the Yaris is intrinsically more special, albeit more work. Long hail the driver's car.